Hey guys, welcome to the Powerful Man Show, where we help married businessmen save their marriages without having to talk about it, get unstuck, and gain clarity in their lives. As I like to say, life is too short for average. I'm your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, the Powerful Man Matthews. Now let's get this started. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Powerful Man Show. Tim, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. You? Doing okay. Uh, I'm doing okay as well. It's my anniversary today, so I was going to take this oh. week off. I know you probably don't recall it, but uh, a couple times I had mentioned it in our team meetings that I wouldn't work this week. It's my wife's birthday this week. It's our anniversary, um, and here we are. You know, I love doing this for the men. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Got a lot, as you said in the previous podcast. There's just so much going on in the movement, and I get hyped about it. And something that came up for me, I was thinking about this uh, last night. My wife and I did this epic hike, just a really big mountain hike. And in my backpack, I had a bottle of champagne and two, uh, you know, they're basically camping metal tumblers with me. Uh, and as we sat in this overlook, overlooking, because I live in the national forest, you know that most guys know this. Uh, you know, all around me, we're looking at these beautiful, majestic mountains. We're on this overlook, which is a fire, you know, lookout tower and uh, pop a cork of champagne. And we're just, we're celebrating, right? Happier than we've been probably in nine years. And it got me to reflect on it because the question that we get asked a lot at the powerful man is, you know, is it worth saving? Is my marriage worth working on? And I think it's really interesting and it's a special timing for me because I've shared it very publicly that my wife and I went through a really tough time. And at one point in our marriage, very early on, right, I didn't know if it was worth working on. I had this exact same question going through my head and I've talked about it. And I distinctly remember, uh, so I, my wife and I separated, right? I took off, I went down to San Diego, California, had a house on the beach, really rough, I know. Uh, and I remember running on the the sand, going for a run, and the, you know, kind of the cool, crisp wave air as it hits the the water. Excuse me, the air hits the water. It sprayed on me, and I remember thinking there, kind of like, "Hey, have is this worth working on? Have I done all necessary for this?" And I came to the same conclusion. And you know, kind of as I'm sitting there with my wife today or last night on this overlook, I am so glad I did. And what I decided there, Tim, was, look, if we still love each other, then it's worth working on. And I started asking myself some very deliberate questions uh, on the beach that day. I sat down in the sand, you know, still great view in San Diego. And I started asking myself a couple questions. One is, do I still love her? Yes or no? And this is what I asked the guys today, right? Do you still love your wife? And the answer is yes, then I say it is worth working on assuming that she's willing to work on it too, right? Doesn't mean she has to do the work today, but you still want to do the work yourself because that's number two, right? So question number two is I said, am I the absolute best version of myself? The answer was no, right? Am I always the best? No, honestly, I, I wasn't. So then I thought about it for a little while. Said, if I'm not being the best version of myself, how can I expect my wife to be the best version of herself? And why don't I go all in, do everything I can for 60 days, 30 to 60 days, make sure consistently I'm being the absolute best version of Doug that I could be, show my wife, not only for her, but for myself, right? That's where it starts, doing that for myself and not worrying about her making any changes at all. And I'm, Tim, I'm so glad I made that decision. That's what I did. I went all in on working on Doug. All in on working on myself. I didn't ask my wife to do anything, but I'll tell you what, she noticed a huge shift in me, right? And when I started making those changes, guess who else made changes later on? My wife. Now, hindsight being 2020, I know this is nothing new to you, Tim, or guys that have been listening to this podcast for the last few years, is when the man shows up as the man that his wife has already always seen him to be, right? In other words, your wife knows who you can be as a man. And so when we don't show up fully, she's let down. When we do show up as that powerful man or the wolf who's wise, open, loving, and fierce, what tends to happen is the woman starts to follow lead, right? She starts to work on herself afterwards because what happens in her psychology is she's saying, okay, okay, he's willing to put in the work. 
he's not only just saying it, right? Because how many times as, as guys do we say, oh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to start that diet. Oh, you know what, honey? Don't, you know, don't give me any potatoes. I'm doing carnivore, paleo, whatever <laughs> diet it may be. Only for a week later, we're, we're down in a pizza and some beer, right? That diet's done. So she's heard this all before. What she wants to do is see action. And this really hit me hard, Tim, because, you know, here I am nine years later on this overlook with this woman who's looking at me with the same eyes, if not more intense, that she looked at me when she said, I do, when we got married. The smile, the love. And I got a picture and I'll show it to the guys. I'll post on to the guys on the Facebook group. There's a picture of her and the, the sun is coming down through the clouds behind her. And you can see the sun rays and you can just see how radiant and happy she is. I didn't take her to a fancy dinner. We didn't go on a huge cruise or to a Caribbean vacation. We went on a hike, a simple hike, brought a bottle of champagne. You know, it was a nice bottle, but nothing. And my wife was on cloud nine. And the reason she was is because I put in the work that nine years ago and we're here today. So when guys get into this situation, so if you're listening to this podcast and you're in the situation trying to figure out of, hmm, is this worth saving? Is this worth working in? Or said another way, the question I had for myself was, if she's not doing the work, why should I? And especially if I don't know if it's going to work out anyway, right? Why don't I put this effort into finding another woman? That's what I was thinking. But instead, if there's love there, and if you still have work to do yourself, then invest in yourself that time. Because the worst thing, I can't imagine if I would have filed divorce or my wife would have, and we would have separated and me knowing that I didn't put the work in, how that would feel today, this nine years later, if we were divorced, I would always be wondering, what if? What if I actually did you know, put the work in? What if I did step up? And to me, that's gotta be the biggest, biggest pain point for a lot of guys. Yeah, <clears throat> completely is, right? I mean, luckily for us, we work with guys that choose to do what you did. Mm -hmm. You know, we get to see that side of it where the ch guys choose to go all in on themselves. The guys choose to take responsibility and ownership for their side of the street and do the work on it. Um, and it's fantastic because obviously nine times out of 10, we know the result that produces, um, especially when there's loving love there, especially when the guys drop the, the stubbornness that often gets in the way in the beginning, right? Well, no, why should I do it? She should do it. I've already tried. I've done this. I've done that. I've done the other. Um, but usually what guys don't understand as well is the things that they've tried, if they have done them from a place of transaction, okay, I'm going to do this and then I expect you to do that, is they're creating covert contracts with their wife as well, which covert contract, essentially you just start, you do something and uh, you do it to get something in return, but you don't communicate that to the other person. So they don't know about it, hence it being covert. But to you, it's kind of an unwritten agreement, uh, a contract that you make in your mind. And it's interesting because we were speaking to a man yesterday who uh, is joining the activation method. And that was his exact thing. He was saying how um, he'd put in all this effort over the previous few years inconsistently, he admitted, you know, he put some in, didn't see what he wanted in return, then went again, didn't see the, what he wanted from his wife, then stopped, then tried to, so he's had this inconsistency with his efforts. So to his wife, obviously, she knows that, hang on a minute, he's only going to do this and act this way when he gets what he wants. He isn't doing it for the right reason, which, which is, for, like you said, you're doing it for you, not for Erin, you're doing it for yourself because you realize that you get to change so you can be a better man for you, first and foremost, so you can better lead your life regardless of whether she's there or not. And naturally, that's a very attractive um, that's a very attractive place for a woman to be as well because naturally, if, if a man sets a direction, the course of action, and he's going there regardless, then she, you know, typically people don't want to be left out, right? Hey, what's going on over there? Curiosity starts to peak. So... Um, you've got to be doing it for the right reasons. There cannot be any covert contracts. Um, and you've got to be, when you're doing it for the right reasons, typically it's far easier to be consistent. Consistency doesn't become 
an issue. No, it doesn't at all. Um, and I think if you, so guys, if you find yourself in this situation, right. And you're, you're wondering, Hey, look, is this worth saving? Right. I'm going to invite you to do what I did and fast forward to today, what we've had thousands of other men do is first and foremost, ask yourself this question. Do I love her? Yes or no. I don't want to hear the story. She's had an affair. You've had an affair, you know, whatever it may be just yes or no. And if the answer is yes, then it's worth working on. And what I mean by that is you get to put some clear boundaries. So if, for example, if your wife is, is still having an affair, in other words, she's still sleeping with seeing another guy, you get to draw a line in the sand. You got to protect your own health and your own mental health and your own sanity. You can't put up with that. It's just not fair. However, maybe she's had an affair. Maybe she hasn't. If she's stopped, you still love her, then the answer is yes, it is worth working on. But you have to double down on you and your growth. You just have to, right? Actions speak louder than words. Um, we've said this many times in the podcast. You guys have all heard this before. What's the definition of hell? Well, the definition of hell is meeting the man you could have been. And on, as Tim said, we're lucky enough to see, meet and work with so many men who have invested in themselves and are turning themselves around. And on the flip side of that, we also get to talk to a lot of guys who have left it till it's too late and they have a lot of regrets, you know? So we do get to talk to the guys who said, screw this, I'm not going to do it unless she does it. And I don't know if it's worth it. And then we get the call a year or two later saying, I wish I would have done it. Now it's too late. Mm -hmm. Right. And now they're, but now to those guys, a couple of those guys, their credit, they're now going through the program because the patterns are repeating themselves in their second, third, or fourth marriage, right? That doesn't go away. And that's what you get to understand. That was another decision I made. And I've talked about this again before is I knew that whatever baggage I was carrying or whatever fault I may have had personally within my marriage, I was just going to take that into the next relationship. And I was smart enough to know that. Um, even though I thought I was pretty close to perfect and it was all her fault, right? <laughs> you know, but I knew that if I just left and went with another woman, the pattern would repeat itself in a different way, a different light, right? And so that's where you also get to realize, guys, that when you invest in yourself, whether it be time, money, or some other resource, when you invest in yourself, you can only get, you know, exponential gains. No one can ever take that away from you. And your stock, quote, stock continues to rise. You can take that new knowledge, those new practices, that new behavior into the next month, year, decade, and continue to invest in yourself and grow. I mean, you guys, the guys that listen to this, most of you guys are business owners or executives. You know that. You know when you learn a new skill, that only makes you better, right? That only makes you better as a leader, better as a man, better as a business owner. And the same thing applies to marriage. We're just never taught these skills. So it's not our fault. Yeah, very true. Very true. Well said. So Tim, what what would you advise a guy who's sitting there and he's going, man, I don't know. You know, my wife, poof, you know, she just really needs to be the one to make these changes. I'm doing all the work here. What would you have him do? I think what you've said is, is spot on, right? First of all, sitting down and asking yourself, do you still love her? Um, if the answer is yes, and she's willing to work on it as well. I mean, look, even if she isn't willing to work on it, we've had so many situations where the wife has said, nope, not interested. We've had situations where they've been going through divorce. The wife has moved out. Uh, they've not been together for a year. I could list tons of different scenarios yeah. where it would appear that she isn't willing to work on it. But as soon as the guy becomes committed, so do you still have a yes, right? That's the moment of commitment, which you made. Um, as soon as the guy becomes committed and he stops being a victim, wishing that she would change, because obviously that's easier, right? It's easier to point the blame than it is to take a look at your own shortcomings. It just typically human nature dictates that it is. Um, so I would recommend he answers that question and then he sits down and he looks at, where is he not step into the line? What, what does his side of the street look like? He could do that by writing down all the complaints he has about his wife and then looking at how he does them. 
or how you do them, rather, if you're listening to this. Uh, what are all the complaints that your wife does uh, or that you have about your wife, rather? Maybe it's that she's messy or that she um, complains or that she's negative or whatever it may be. And then have a look at how you do those um, because I think it's very important that when she committed to this, what do you actually get to do? How do you get to clean up your side of the street? Obviously, the easiest and fastest path is the activation method, um, obviously. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Uh, get clear on where you're at. Then from there, you get to set your course of action and go there without expecting any reaction or response or anything from your wife. You're not doing this for her. You're doing it for you. So I'd also write down the reasons why you must change for you. Why must you change right now for you? And then from there, obviously, you can get moving. You can um, obviously you want to get your alpha rise and shine in place. You want to get your alpha decompression in place because they're going to be the bookmarks of your day that are really going to help you uh, finish, well, start and finish your day strong. Um, but I think the biggest thing is to get clear on your commitment because that's something that she, she has seen lacking from you in many ways uh, over the years. And I think as soon as she sees the commitment and consistency, a lot of things then come from that. The curiosity, the intrigue, the desire, that everything comes from that, that um, often goes hand in hand with the relationship healing. Yeah, guys. So, you know, one thing that you get to realize here for you guys that are in the situation where, you know, especially if your wife, you feel like your wife's moved on, you know, um, because a lot of guys find themselves in this situation where she's moved on physically, found another man or moved out of the house or moved on emotionally where she ignores you. um, All you guys do is argue. You get to remember that she once loved you, right? Probably passionately. And she looked at you with love, respect and admiration. The cool thing is, is you can get that back, but you got, it starts with you doing the work, it starts with you doing the work on yourself, right? So if you're ever feeling uh, stuck, unclear, right? This is a sign that you're deactivated. That's exactly why we have the activation method. Whatever you do, do something and take decisive action, right? Do what I did at that beach where I drew a line in the sand physically and metaphorically and I made massive moves and changes. I didn't have the powerful man. It didn't exist back there for me. So I had to do it the hard way. You guys had the opportunity for a, priv- a proven methodology. Heck, we've got over 600 podcasts, or excuse me, about 600 podcasts on here at this point, just shy of it, mm-hmm. that you guys can just delve through. Now, it's not as good as getting coaching, but you're going to get some information. I'm going to encourage you to do that. Maybe it's not the right time for you to join the activation method. Maybe you don't have the resources. Well, there's tons of free stuff that Tim and I and the rest of the coaches and team are putting out on a regular basis. We're doing live Q and A's completely free. We're doing specialized groups completely free. There's things that you can do. If you want to shorten the gap of pain time, right? You want to get there faster. That's when you do the activation method. It's just a proven technique that's worked for thousands of other men. You know, I just, I'm passionate about this. Again, it's my anniversary today, guys. I'm coming on here because I love you guys. I want the best for you. <laughs> you know, as I always say, I can't do the push ups for you. Just like, you know, some of you guys are in great shape. You can't do the push ups for me, but you can want it for me and you can encourage me. And I'm encouraging you to take massive action, guys. Remember, I am in your corner. Guys, please, as we always say, take massive action. And we'll see you next time. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this episode. But as I always say, in the moment of insight, take massive action. You see, there are two types of men that listen to a podcast like this. Those that go on from one podcast or show to another, just hoping things are gonna change and realizing that they're gonna be in the same place month after month, year after year. You see, I was this guy, so I completely get it. You may just not be ready. But there's also a second man, a second man that listens to a show just like this. And this is a guy who takes massive action so they can shorten the learning curve, compress time, and get results to be the wolf. See, wolf is an acronym for wise, open, loving, and fierce. Now, ask yourself, which one am I? And just be honest with yourself there. And there's no judgment on my end, but if you're ready to move from deactivated deer mode, which is defend, excuse, explain, react, to activated wolf, wise, open, loving, and fierce, then go over 
to thepowerfulman.com forward slash grow and go there now. In fact, I'll make it super easy for you. I will even put the link right in the description here so you can just click it and go over there now to learn more. Guys, in the moment of insight, take massive action. Go from deactivated to activated because like I said, life is too short for average. And I'll see you on the next episode.